we got to be ready to be out on point and ready to go at a moment's notice. The U.S. Navy has a secret weapon, a massive aircraft carrier in the shadows of the world's oceans. This ship, hidden until now, has shocked countries like Hamas, Iran, Russia, and China. Moving silently through the seas, this carrier is like a ghost. It's armed with powerful weapons that nobody expected. Its sudden appearance has made these countries nervous and watchful. This ship is not just big and strong, it's smart, with the latest technology to protect an attack. It's out there in the deep waters, ensuring the U.S. stays ahead in a world where danger can come from anywhere. More than just a ship, it's a secret guardian, a shadow in the ocean that keeps America's enemies guessing. Stay with us as we dive into this secret U.S. aircraft carrier's tale, a dark global surprise. The USS Gerald R. Ford is a monumental marvel of naval engineering and stands as the lead ship in her United States Navy aircraft carrier class. Named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford, who served with valor in World War II aboard the light aircraft carrier Monterey, this ship epitomizes American naval power and technological revolution. In 2006, amid the twilight years of Gerald Ford's life, a stirring proposition was made by Senator John Warner to name the CVN-78 in Ford's honor, symbolizing a living tribute to the former president. This proposal, encapsulated in a defense spending bill, was signed by President George W. Bush, though it did not legally bind the Navy to this name. However, in a poignant moment of remembrance, Donald Rumsfeld, then Secretary of Defense, announced the naming during Ford's eulogy, marking the CVN-78 as one of the few U.S. ships to bear the name of a living individual. By August 2011, the carrier, a behemoth of steel and technology, was halfway through its structural completion. As months turned into years, each piece of this colossal puzzle was meticulously assembled culminating in May 2013 when the last of 162 superlifts was put in place, marking 100% structural completion. In a symbolic gesture linking past to present, a time capsule containing sandstone from the White House, Navy coins, and aviator wings was welded into the ship, sealing within it a piece of history and hope. The USS Gerald R. Ford was not just another aircraft carrier. It was a harbinger of futuristic naval warfare. Equipped with cutting-edge technologies like the AN-SPY-3 and AN-SPY-4 radars and the revolutionary electromagnetic aircraft launch system, it promised a significant enhancement over its predecessors. This technological marvel was expected to launch more aircraft per day and operate with fewer crew members, potentially saving billions in operating costs over its lifespan. Yet these advancements brought their own set of challenges. In 2014, critical systems like emails and the advanced arresting gear faced reliability issues, necessitating extensive testing and improvements. These hiccups were a reminder of the complex dance between innovation and practical implementation. In the ensuing years, the narrative of the USS Gerald R. Ford took more turns. By March 2018, the cost had escalated to $13.027 billion, making it the most expensive warship ever built. Its delivery was pushed back to October 2019 due to issues with the nuclear propulsion system and munitions elevators. The ship also faced operational challenges. In 2020, it reported significant problems with its weapons elevators, and a 2021 DoD report stated that it was still not combat ready due to issues with emails. Despite these challenges, the USS Gerald R. Ford represents a bold stride in naval engineering, a testament to human ambition and the relentless pursuit of technological advancement. Its story is a dramatic saga of overcoming obstacles, embodying the spirit of innovation and resilience. After overcoming challenges and delays, the Gerald R. Ford embarked on its maiden voyage on October 4, 2022. It sailed the Atlantic, flanked by NATO allies, projecting power and solidarity. This voyage marked a new chapter in naval history, showcasing America's commitment to global stability and peace. The U.S. is more than ready for war since the USS Gerald R. Ford is not just a ship, it is a story of resilience, innovation, and honor. A floating fortress that encapsulates the spirit of a nation and its dedication to safeguarding the seas. In 2023, the USS Gerald R. Ford's journey took a dramatic twist. Reacting to tensions in the Middle East, the U.S. sent this mighty aircraft carrier to the eastern Mediterranean Sea. 
This move, decided by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, was a bold statement from the U.S., aiming to keep peace in the region. The Gerald R. Ford, with its advanced technology and formidable presence, joined other powerful ships like the USS Normandy and Thomas Hudner. Together, they symbolized U.S. strength and commitment to maintaining stability in these troubled waters. This deployment showcased the carrier's military might and highlighted its role in global strategic operations, far beyond just being a marvel of naval engineering. But can any adversary truly match the might and technological supremacy of this floating giant? The U.S. Zumwalt is a marvel of modern naval engineering and stands as the lead ship of the Zumwalt-class destroyers, named after the legendary Admiral Elmo Zumwalt. This vessel, a testament to human ingenuity and military might, came into existence through a contract awarded to Bath Ironworks on February 14, 2008, costing an astronomical $3.5 to $4.4 billion. Ship's story, from its start to completion, is a tale of big dreams and tech progress. It began being built on November 17, 2011, and was put into the water on October 28, 2013, a big moment in sea history. The official naming ceremony of this powerful ship was on April 12, 2014, showing it was ready to protect and serve. With a displacement of 14,564 long tons and stretching 600 feet in length, the Zumwalt is a behemoth on the waters. Powered by two mighty Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbines, and an integrated power system, propelling it to speeds of 33.5 knots. Despite its massive size, the Zumwalt's design is a stroke of genius, featuring stealth capabilities with a radar cross-section akin to a mere fishing boat. This allows it to glide through waters undetected by enemy radars. Its armament is no less impressive, equipped with 20 MK-57 VLS modules, capable of holding various missiles, including RIM-66 Standard, RIM-162 ESSM, BGM-109 Tomahawk, and RUM-139 VL Azrock, although its 155mm advanced gun system lacks ammunition. This floating fortress can carry two SH-60 Lamps helicopters, one MH-60R helicopter, and three MQ-8 Fire Scout UAVs, adding to its formidable presence in any maritime theater. The USS Zumwalt was a significant project from its inception in 2008 to its launch in 2013. Under Captain James A. Kirk, it faced engineering challenges and a notable incident in the Panama Canal. This ship, featuring advanced stealth capabilities and a formidable arsenal, underwent a series of trials and modernization efforts, establishing itself as a key asset in the U.S. Navy's future operations. The Zumwalt's adventure started when Captain James A. Kirk took charge, much like a captain from a space story, leading the Navy's newest and most advanced warship. Just 105 days after completion, the ship set off on its first voyage from Maine, proudly showing off its high-tech features. Before its epic three-month voyage, the Zumwalt, with 147 crew members and 30 contractors, had barely tasted the ocean just 18 days at sea. This first expedition was crucial, testing intricate systems like the SPY-3 radar and the SQQ-90 sonar suite, vital for its future endeavors. As it navigated from the Kennebec River to San Diego, the Zumwalt, towering at 16,000 tons, dwarfed its predecessors, the Arleigh Burke destroyers, in both size and complexity. It required a crew with heightened technical expertise, particularly for its novel power system, a testament to the ship's advanced nature. The Zumwalt's trip was about managing its 35,000 signals for things like fire and door positions. The crew had to pay close attention to this high-tech system, a tough but important job for such an advanced ship. Everyone on the ship, regardless of their rank, helped out. From the captain to the newest crew member, all were involved in the ship's maintenance. This created a simple but united atmosphere, key to the ship running smoothly. The Zumwalt faced problems too. It had engineering issues, like with its oil system. These problems were tough, but showed the crew's ability to solve problems and adapt. The Zumwalt's first time at sea was on December 7, 2015. This was a big test of what it could do. After delays, it headed to the Atlantic, ready to show its strength. On November 21, 2016, the Zumwalt had a big challenge in the Panama Canal. A problem with its engine caused it to hit the canal walls. This showed how complex the ship was and the unpredictable nature of running such an advanced vessel. In April 2019, the Zumwalt went on its first official trip in the Pacific. This included a stop in Hawaii, a big moment in its history. 
In August 2023, the Zumwalt started a new phase in Mississippi at Ingalls Shipbuilding. It was set for a two-year upgrade, including adding the conventional prompt strike weapon system, keeping it as a key part of the U.S. Navy. This story of the USS Zumwalt is not just about a ship, but also about human dreams, technological progress, and constant striving for excellence in sea warfare. In the vastness of the oceans, will there ever be another ship that can stealthily navigate the waves as masterfully as the Zumwalt? The USS Virginia, or SSN 774 for its enemy, is a marvel of modern naval engineering and stands as the pioneering lead ship of her class in the United States Navy. She is the 10th vessel to bear the name of the Commonwealth of Virginia, marking a significant chapter in U.S. naval history. The journey of this nuclear-powered attack submarine began with the award of her construction contract to the Electric Boat Division of General Dynamics Corporation on September 30, 1998. The keel of this technological titan was laid down in Groton, Connecticut on September 2, 1999. In a ceremony steeped in historical significance, she was launched on August 16, 2003, sponsored by Linda Johnson Robb, the wife of former Virginia Governor and Senator Charles Robb, and daughter of U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson and Lady Bird Johnson. The selection of Linda Johnson Robb as the sponsor was symbolic, highlighting the submarine's connection to American history and legacy. The USS Virginia is a 7-800-ton behemoth that stretches a formidable 377 feet in length. Her 34-foot beam and 32-foot draft make her an imposing presence in the ocean's depths. She is propelled by a state-of-the-art S9G pressurized water reactor nuclear reactor, delivering a massive 280,000 shaft horsepower, ensuring her ability to reach speeds of 25 knots and dive beyond 800 feet. The submarine can house a crew of 134 officers and enlisted personnel, standing ready to operate the 12 vertical launch system tubes for Tomahawk cruise missiles and four 21-inch torpedo tubes for MK-48 torpedoes and BGM-109 Tomahawks. The USS Virginia has a special design with a photonics mast. This lets it have a bigger and better control room than older submarines with regular periscopes. The submarine also has a chamber for sending out SEALs, divers, or other special units underwater, which is really important for what it can do. These parts highlight how the submarine fits into today's warfare, where being able to do many things and using new technology are very important. The USS Virginia features a unique design with a photonics mast and advanced control systems, marking a new era in submarine warfare. Its role extends beyond combat to include diplomacy and global maritime security, not just any vessel. She was the first U.S. Navy submarine completely designed on a computer, marking a technological leap. On the global stage, her debut was nothing short of spectacular. She completed her first deployment on November 23, 2005, to support the global war on terrorism, blazing a trail in maritime history. Her role in the global war on terrorism highlights the changing nature of naval operations in the 21st century, where submarines play a crucial role in various missions, her capabilities are not just in stealth and power, but also in diplomacy. Sailing the high seas purposefully, she has graced ports in strategic locations like Spain, Greece, the UAE, and Turkey. Through these diplomatic visits, the submarine serves as a symbol of American naval strength and a tool for fostering international relations. In terms of technical prowess, the USS Virginia is unparalleled. She's a nuclear-powered leviathan, a submerged force capable of engaging threats both above and below the ocean's surface while remaining virtually undetectable. Integrating such advanced weaponry and stealth technology illustrates the modern demands of naval warfare, where being undetected is as crucial as firepower. But the USS Virginia is more than just a vessel of war. She represents a significant leap in design and functionality. She's the first of her kind without a traditional periscope, instead featuring a photonics mast. This innovation allowed for a more versatile control room placement, enhancing operational capabilities. Not to forget, she can deploy SEALs and other special forces while submerged, adding to her versatility. These advancements not only increase the submarine's combat capabilities, but also broaden the scope of missions it can undertake, from intelligence gathering to special operations. And we refer to her as she, and not it, because she is the mother of all submarines. The USS Virginia equals innovation and strength, a key asset in the U.S. Navy's arsenal. Her journey from conception to deployment encapsulates a legacy of power, technological advancement, and dedication to safeguarding global peace and stability. Her story is one of evolution, 
From the early days of submarine design to the cutting-edge technology she embodies today, reflecting the ever-changing landscape of naval warfare and global security, could any mission be too dangerous for this silent guardian of the deep? Commissioned with glory on January 16, 2010, this literal combat ship, with a striking trimaran hull, was designed for operation in nearshore environments, but it's much more than just a ship. It's a symbol of freedom and strength. Its commissioning marked a significant milestone in naval history, introducing a new breed of versatile high-speed warships designed for many missions. With an impressive length of 421 feet and armed with a plethora of advanced weaponry, including a MK-11057 mm gun, .50 cal guns, and the CRAM CIWS, the USS Independence was a formidable presence in the waters. It's not just about its arsenal. The ship's design allowed it to smoothly navigate the high seas at 44 knots. This agility and speed were thanks to its innovative propulsion system, combining diesel engines and gas turbines, perfectly engineered for rapid responses in critical situations. What sets USS Independence apart is its versatile design. It was built with a mission bay capable of holding various modules, allowing it to adapt to different combat roles, from hunting submarines to mine clearing. This adaptability was crucial in its various missions, ensuring it remained an essential asset in the US Navy's arsenal. Yet the road of the USS Independence wasn't without its challenges. Overrunning its budget by an unhealthy 220%, the ship's path was as tumultuous as the waters it sailed. The total projected cost for the ship was $704 million, far exceeding the Navy's original estimate of $220 million. During its builder's trials, the ship faced issues such as a leaking port gas turbine shaft seal, leading to rearranged trials and delays. Furthermore, an inspection found 2,080 discrepancies, including 39 high-priority deficiencies. Despite these hurdles, it showcased resilience and technological prowess, completing its maiden voyage in 2010 and impressively serving in the RIMPAC exercises in 2014. Additionally, in 2010, the Navy had to ask for an additional $5.3 million to correct problems found in the sea trials, including aggressive corrosion caused by an aluminum hull acting as an anode in contact with the stainless steel propulsion system. This corrosion issue led to a significant rift between Austal and General Dynamics, the ship's builders, and required extensive repairs. However, the ship still completed its missions, including acting as a plane guard for the aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan during RIMPAC 2014 and performing joint combined operations. However, all journeys have an end, and so did the USS Independences. In 2020, on June 20th, the US Navy made a big announcement. They said that the USS Independence, a large and important ship, would be retired in March 2021. This meant the ship would no longer be used. This decision also included other ships like the Independence. The Navy had a special small ceremony on July 29, 2021, at a place called Naval Base San Diego in California. There they officially retired the USS Independence. This was a big moment because it meant that an important time for the Navy was ending. By 2022, the USS Independence was moved to a place in Bremerton, Washington. This place is where the Navy keeps ships that are not used anymore. Even though the ship doesn't sail or do missions now, it's still very special. It reminds people of the power and many uses it had when it was active. The USS Independence is a symbol of the Navy's past and the important work these ships did. The USS Independence definitely marked a new breed of versatile warships. Despite facing budget overruns and technical issues, it proved its resilience and utility on various missions. This literal combat ship, with its innovative design and propulsion system, was decommissioned in 2021 and now resides at the Naval Inactive Ship Maintenance Facility in Bremerton, Washington, reflecting its past might and versatility. The Independence-class Corvette is distinct for its small, agile design, optimized for operation in offshore environments, and equipped with the latest in stealth technology and secure communications. The contract for the USS Independence was awarded to General Dynamics in July 2003, with the keel laid down on January 19, 2006, and the ship launched on April 26, 2008. Austal USA, an Australian-based company, built the vessel and formally commissioned it in Mobile, Alabama. Notably, the ship's motto, Libertas per Labarem, translates to independence through bold action. 
Featuring a sleek, futuristic design, the USS Independence lacks the vertical surfaces typical of previous warships, instead utilizing angled and closed faces for enhanced stealth. The ship's crew consists of 40 personnel, capable of supporting an additional 35 mission-related crew members. The design also accommodates a large flight deck and a hangar bay, significantly larger than those found on traditional destroyers and cruisers. With a length of 418 feet, a beam of 104 feet, and a depth of just 14 feet, the USS Independence was specially designed for nearshore operations. It displaces 2,500 tons under light load and 3,400 tons under full load. The ship's internal volume is sufficient to support multiple armored vehicles and mission crew, with an access ramp allowing for easy disembarkation. The ship was equipped with a modern suite of processing and sensor equipment, including the Sea Giraffe 3D Air Surface Search Radar from Saab and the Bridgemaster E Navigational Radar Array from Sperry Marine. Additionally, Northrop Grumman developed the Integrated Combat Management System, and the ship featured an electro-optical sensor package with FLIR and TV support. The Independence's flight deck and hangar facilities could support the Sikorsky MH-60R-S Seahawk helicopters and the MQ-8 Fire Scout UAVs. These aircraft were used for a variety of missions, including anti-submarine-slash-anti-ship warfare, search and rescue, and special forces insertion and extraction. For propulsion, the ship used two German MTU Friedrichshafen 20V8000 series diesel engines and two General Electric LM2500 gas turbines, achieving speeds of up to 44 knots and a range of approximately 4,950 miles. The ship's armament was largely defensive, featuring a 57mm Mach-K-110 deck gun, AGM-175 Griffin surface-to-air missiles, and various autocannons and guided missile systems. It also included electronic defense systems like the ES-3601 support measures system and the BAE Systems Nolka Active Radar Decoy. In its operational history, the USS Independence completed its first transit of the Panama Canal Zone in April 2012, symbolizing its readiness for Pacific operations. The ship's crew also engaged in community service, with 18 members volunteering at a Mexican orphanage during its first foreign port call. The vessel was involved in combined maneuvers with the USS Freedom off the Southern California coast. Will the legacy of the USS Independence inspire future generations of naval vessels to push the boundaries of innovation and versatility? The USNS Montford Point, formerly known as TMLP-1, heralds a new era in maritime capabilities as the first vessel in its class of expeditionary transfer docks. This vessel is a tribute to the African-American Marine Corps recruits who trained at Montford Point Camp, North Carolina, from 1942 to 1949. It's a floating marvel, representing a striking blend of innovation and honor. In late 2010, after a substantial allocation of $115 million for advanced design efforts, General Dynamics National Steel and Shipbuilding Company was awarded a colossal contract, estimated at around $500 million, to construct the first of three planned vessels in this series. The Montford Point's design is part of the future-oriented Maritime Prepositioning Force. With an eye on cost-effectiveness, these ships aren't built to combat vessel standards, but are tailored to support military operations like handling hovercrafts, such as the landing craft air cushion. They're equipped with a vehicle staging area, a side port ramp, and large mooring fenders. Decisions were made to forego helicopter capabilities and heavy equipment ship-to-ship -ship transfers, optimizing Montford Point as a seagoing pier for use when access to onshore bases is limited. This flexibility is invaluable, particularly in the wake of natural disasters or in supporting U.S. Marines once ashore. Powering the Montford Point are engines of British design and make. The responsibility of integrating the ship's power systems was entrusted to Convert Team, which was contracted to design and supply the electric power, propulsion, and vessel automation systems. The keel of Montford Point was laid down in San Diego, California on January 19, 2012, marking a significant milestone in its construction. The keel-laying ceremony was graced by Mrs. Pat Mills, the wife of Lieutenant General Richard P. Mills of the U.S. Marine Corps, as the honoree. Montford Point's lengthy process from blueprint to reality took a significant leap forward with its first float-out operation at the General Dynamics NASCO shipyard in San Diego on November 13, 2012. The vessel was christened in March 2013, 
and after successful sea trials, it was delivered to the Military Sea Lift Command in May 2013. Designed to be operated by civilian mariners, the ship is expected to be a key asset for the Military Sea Lift Command, but is not commissioned into the Navy. Members of the Seafarers International Union and the American Maritime Officers Union fill most positions on the ship. In a revolutionary demonstration of capability, on June 13, 2014, Montford Point successfully completed LCACE interface tests off the coast of Camp Pendleton. During these tests, landing craft air cushion moved amphibious assault vehicles from the base and offloaded them onto the ship. This remarkable operation showcased the ESD's ability to function as a mobile sea base and facilitate at-sea transfers. Montford Point's abilities were tested in a series of trials that began in April 2014. These trials included an evaluation to see how well it worked in real operations. The ship's skills were also shown during an exercise in 2015 that focused on helping in disasters. These tests confirmed that Montford Point could work with different cargo ships, which is important for reducing the need to rely on foreign ports for military operations. The USNS Montford Point was awarded in 2011 and launched in 2012. This ship symbolizes innovation and tribute to the African-American Marine Corps recruits. With a unique design focused on supporting military operations and flexibility, it played a crucial role in exercises like RIMPAC and demonstrated its ability to interface with various cargo ships, enhancing the U.S. Navy's operational flexibility. The ship was awarded to General Dynamics National Steel and Shipbuilding Company on May 27, 2011, with the keel laid down in San Diego, California on January 19, 2012. Power Conversion Company Converteam was responsible for the integration of the ship's power systems, including electric power, propulsion, and vessel automation systems. The Montford Point boasts an impressive length of 785 feet, a beam of 164 feet, and a draft of 29.5 feet, with a light displacement of approximately 39,900 tons and a speed of 15 knots. The ship is designed for efficiency and effectiveness in its intended roles. Furthermore, in a move to standardize the designations of various naval vessels on September 4, 2015, the U.S. Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus officially announced the creation of a new ship designation E for expeditionary support. This change meant that the mobile landing platform was reclassified as an expeditionary transfer dock, ESD, thus the Montford Point initially designated as TMLP-1 became TESD-1. The USNS Montford Point represents a significant advancement in naval capabilities, combining operational flexibility with a focus on supporting military and humanitarian missions. The USNS Montford Point is now at a crossroads. The Navy is thinking about retiring these groundbreaking ships, even though they are only about eight to nine years old. These vessels, which started as simple commercial tankers, were transformed into incredible mobile landing platforms. They could sink a bit in the water to let landing crafts come aboard, making loading and unloading supplies at sea easy. This clever design was later changed to add a huge flight deck, making it even more useful. But now, these impressive ships might be taken out of service. This big change shows how the Navy always adapts, trying to meet new challenges on the high seas with smarter, more versatile ships. This change is part of the Force Design 2030 Modernization Plan, emphasizing the need for a global positioning network to support distributed maritime operations. The idea is to enable the Corps to sustain small units dispersed across vast areas, especially in challenging environments like the Pacific Island chains. These new ships will be designed to operate not only in strategic water ports, but also in secondary and tertiary ports, providing operational commanders with more flexibility in resupplying their forces. This shift signifies a major strategic and logistical change in how the Marine Corps plans to conduct future operations. The U.S. gazes into the future, determined to reign supreme over the ocean waves.